recently I've been challenging loads of these things that I would have called unnecessary, like salad dressings, real mayo instead of light mayo, drinking juice instead of like water or Diet Coke. And one of the big, big ones I've got, which I'm gonna challenge this week, is putting cheese on things, like cheese on pasta. I just kind of see it as like a pointless thing, like why would I just sprinkle calories onto my food? It's not gonna fill me up anymore. I don't know, maybe the taste isn't worth it enough. Whatever the reason, I just have this like unnecessary mindset around it. <sighs> and it's weird because I'll watch other people have cheese on their pasta and be really jealous of them and be like, oh my God, I wish I could just do that. But then it's like different rules apply to me. Like, oh, it's fine. Of course they can have cheese on their pasta, but it's unnecessary for me. So I'm going to challenge the shit out of it this week. <laughs> and stop just watching other people do it and being jealous and yeah, start actually like living the life that I wanna live rather than just sitting on the sidelines. I've made spaghetti bolognese for dinner and mozzarella. I'm also gonna make my lunch for tomorrow whilst I'm cooking. It's a bit dry, I'm gonna need a bit more. Food is just food. Brendan is out at football tonight, so I've just gone to the shop to get myself stuff for prawn pasta, and I'm gonna put some cheese on top of it. It took me a good 10 minutes to try and choose which cheese to get. Ugh. Oh my God, I'm gonna dip my hair in the pasta. <laughs> So I got cheddar just to have something different really, to make sure I don't challenge cheese, but then I can only have mozzarella kind of thing. And like, same with cooking whilst Brendan's out, like I need to be able to eat on my own and like do these things for me. So it honestly makes it harder, I'm not gonna lie. Like it's like an extra layer of guilt for me, but oops. <laughs> like what life do I wanna live? Like I want to be able to eat these things on my own, so. Food is just food, it's still the same food. I just try and portion it exactly as I would for somebody else. Oh shit, is that too much? Okay, right, food is just food, food is just food. <laughs> Challenge repeat, Brendan's making dinner tonight. He's making speciality chili con carne and I just popped out to get seasoning for him. When he first started making meals, I absolutely hated it. I like wanted to know every ingredient that was going in, how he was preparing it. Like I just hated handing over control. But like now he's done it a few times. Like it's fine, food is just food. Normal people make normal food. I don't need to have my freaking fingers in it all the time, like knowing everything that's going on. <laughs> and I want to be able to eat food made by other people like if a friend wants to cook for me or at a restaurant or my family or something like yeah I can't always have control over my food what is it zoomed in? It's zoomed in <laughs> it's a cider oh my god it's really hard to get in I got some crisps whilst we're cooking oh, whilst Brent's cooking are we prepared for it? <laughs> These are my favourite crisps, by the way. Oh, one off. Found half. Taste. 
them enough. Is rice supposed to be al dente? Or just pasta? Pasta. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit al dente. Something more like this, a bit hard. Yeah, well, it's maybe alright. Nah, let's give it a bit more. Just let it infuse the flavours a bit more. The meat absorbs the. Yeah, I just thought you get it all the same colour and it's fine, calls it. No, I need time for the meat to <laughs> really absorb the flavour. Alright, okay. Should do a little taste test. Yes. Flavour's absorbing so nicely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and cheese. I'm also going to put some Branston pickle on mine because my mum says it goes really well. I've got Ben and Jerry's for dessert. And I have dessert after every single dinner, like I have to have something sweet. So I normally have like ice cream or chocolate, but I just don't film it because these videos aren't intended to show like every single thing that I eat in the day. It's more like things that I challenge, how I go about it, like techniques that my psychologist teaches me, things that have helped me to challenge things, so. But... Oh my God, seriously. Look at that ice cream. I've just done yoga, <laughs> why I'm wearing this, but challenge repeat. And Brendan's out of the pub quiz tonight, so I'm cooking for myself. I'm gonna have the leftover chili con carne from last night with a jacket potato. I'm popping into the shop to buy a different type of cheese today. It's one someone actually recommended on Instagram and this girl's from France. She said it's her absolute favorite cheese. So straight into the shop, pick up the cheese, buy it. <laughs> straight into the shop, pick up the cheese, buy it. <laughs> Well, that actually wasn't too bad at all. <laughs> Picked it up straight away. Maybe because I've tried a couple of different types of cheeses now, maybe it's getting a bit easier. I don't know. Although, I'm not gonna lie, with Brenda not being home, I'm definitely starting to get a couple of niggles already. Like, do you really need to have cheese if he's not there? Do you really need to have chili con carne? Could you just have something else? Blah, 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 blah. Ugh! <laughs> oh, good. Right, salad dressing. Someone taught me a really good tip. Do you want to hear it? What? When you're making dressing, put the oil in first because then the honey doesn't stick to the spoon. That was Instagram that taught me that. Bosh. So when I get these niggly thoughts of like, why don't you leave this bit out? You've already had this today. You're going to have this later. Blah, 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 blah. Like, to be honest, I just try and completely block them now, like eject the eating disorder DVD, opposite actions, go against whatever my head says. And especially when it's around the idea of like unnecessary calories, like everything starts becoming unnecessary calories. And then, oh, I don't know, I just like, lose control to my head. Like this dinner, for example, I wouldn't have the orange juice because I'd be like, well, that's unnecessary calories, just have a water. The dressing on the salad could be unnecessary calories. The chili, I didn't make it, but if I did, I'd be like, oh, well, why do you really need to cook with oil? Do you really need to use red meat? I want Branson pickle on it. Why, that's unnecessary calories. Cheese, that's unnecessary calories. <coughs> that's the shit I want to break away from. Like, it controls me and I've lived by those rules for years. And it's bullshit. Like, I've been having salads with dressing on for months now, fine. I've been having food cooked in oil, fine. I've been using cheese on my food recently. Like, it is fine, but I need to do it to see that it's fine. And also your food ends up being shit when you listen to these rules. Like you see a recipe that looks amazing and you're like, oh, I'll do that, that looks so nice. And then by the time you've finished, you've done so many shitty little eating disorder adaptations and like diluted things down so much that, yeah, you're left with a pile of crap. <laughs> Opposite actions, if you give in to the thoughts of unnecessary calories, you end up with shit food. <laughs> and then you strengthen all those eating disorder rules in your head that next time will make you think you have to leave it again because you'll still think it's unnecessary calories. At some point you have to break that cycle, go against your head, opposite actions, eject the eating disorder DVD, and rewire your brain, like have this stuff to show yourself it's okay, which is not nice. Like it would be so much more comfortable for me this week to not 
have cheese on pasta. Because when I've done all those things, like my brain's been telling me I'm being a twat. <laughs> like the thoughts come and they feel believable, but I just try and block them and do opposites. Right, let me make my dinner now. <laughs> This is literally so tasty. <laughs> and I'm actually quite proud of myself. Like, I feel like this is the sort of dinner I would watch Brendan eat and I'd be really jealous and be like, oh my God, I wish I could eat that one day. But then I'd just be like, no, that's not for you. Too many unnecessary calories. So in a way it's quite nice to be actually like living the life I ultimately want to live rather than just talking about it or watch other people living it. And I haven't been filming what I've been eating in this video just because it will end up being so long. But I'm not like serving this shit up and then chucking it away. I'm not starving myself to allow myself to eat this. The point of me challenging these foods is so that I'm able to have them, oops, regularly in my diet. Not so that I can have them, but I have to starve myself if I want to have them. So just in case people are watching and being like, oh, I bet she's not really eating that, or I bet she's restricting to make up for the calories, or I bet she's compensating or whatever. Like, I'm not here to like, pretend I'm eating loads of food. Like, no, these foods are challenging for me. And I'm just trying to show like the techniques to help me like when I get stuck or feel guilty or anxious or what have you. So yeah, I didn't know if that might be in a couple of people's minds. So I just wanted to share that. <laughs> so true, look at it, it's so good. Yum. Right, sorry about the lighting, I've just got to work. But hopefully this video shows some of the process I go through with challenging things like unnecessary calories. Challenge, repeat, challenge, repeat. Like even if you feel shit, just to do it anyway. Which was like mind blowing for me to realize like, actually it's okay to not feel okay all the time. Um, feeling shit doesn't last forever. But if you give into your eating disorder, that does last forever. And then with time, it gets easier as well. Like cheese is already feeling so much easier for me. And normally things don't get better that quickly. Like often it's taken me weeks or months of like consistently challenging to really get over fears and i'd kind of like to have shown it being harder to like show how i cope with that but i'm not going to pretend things are harder than they are and yay really if it's gotten easier quicker it's maybe because i've already challenged cheese and i've been having it in other contexts which is actually a good point like something else i hope this video shows is like i didn't just challenge cheese in one capacity i tried to challenge it like eating with Brendan, eating on my own, eating different brands of cheese at different times of day, like having it for dinner, having it for lunch, eating at home, eating out at a restaurant. Like I've kind of fallen into that trap before of challenging a food and then you can only have it in the way that you've challenged it. <laughs> so you've not properly challenged the fear. It's like the fear's shapeshifted or morphed into another version of a fear. And then you're still really scared of that thing if it comes in a slightly different context to how you've challenged it. So if it's like a different brand or a different time of day, or it's made by a friend or something like that. Also, it's been helpful for me to think like once it's in, it's in with fear foods. Like I'm not just challenging things as a one-off or for a week and then never doing it again. Like the point of challenging these things is so that they become normal and like a regular part of my diet. And I do actually have them regularly, not just, I'll oh, remember that one week where I challenged cheese. <laughs> right, I better go to work now. It's actually a Sunday, like we work Sunday to Thursday in Dubai, which is really weird, but anyway, <laughs> lots of love to everyone. <laughs>